I am a warrior and a member of the team. I feel like I come with something big. I feel um, exhausted, yet, yet very relieved at the same time. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am pretty ecstatic. Physically and mentally tough. Actually, I feel better now than I did when I got my, my bachelor's degree from college. I, it was kind of like, boom, you know, everybody has a bachelor's degree. I'm an expert, and I'm a professional. I'm glad I did it. I'm, I'm just thrilled. They challenge you um, mentally and physically. I am the American freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. Warrant officer. Technical expert. An individual that is willing to take on challenges. Warrant officers have to be uh, well rounded, well faceted. It is an individual that is willing to get out of their comfort zone. And it's not necessarily what they're good at that they're going to have to technically advise on. Warrant officer, highly specialized in a military occupation for an entire career. They are ultimately the stabilizing force. Of, a, of an organization because they maintain uh, their expertise. They're the ones that stay in place and they're like there over an extended period of time. Warrant officer, subject matter experts. The key in being a warrant officer is not necessarily uh, being, being able to lead from the battlefield, but to be able to greatly assist that commander in making the, uh, uh, an accurate and informed decision on what could happen in the battlefield environment. Warrant Officer, Mentor. As a Warrant Officer, you have to demonstrate traits of excellence, of leadership, and of training abilities that you can help others and train others to be most knowledgeable in their field. Warrant Officer, Leader. And what I look for in a candidate, or a possible candidate, is someone that has the passion to take what they have acquired with their enlisted background and a passion to make a difference. Uh, they value the challenge, they value the opportunity to lead, and as well as being the go-to person, which is what warrant officers ultimately are. The path to becoming a warrant officer in the Texas Army National Guard is an individualized journey laid out in three phases. It takes dedication and determination. Phase one involves finding a warrant officer position and putting together your predetermination packet, then receive an appointment as a warrant officer candidate. The symposium is designed as a workshop so that we can bring all these soldiers together and we can discuss what it takes to become a warrant officer. I decided that this would be the time that I'm going to use all my energies, every talent that I've ever earned or experience that I've gained and uh, put it to good use. When a soldier puts that application together, that is their entire military career in one packet. And so when that application goes to the active duty branch proponent, um, it's pretty much telling them what they've accomplished in their, in their life. They give you all the information you need. There's recruiters there to help you. I was able to uh, generate the correct paperwork, put the paperwork in the correct format, I was able to get my physical, all, all the things that are difficult to do, especially as geographically diverse and large as Texas is. They did it, everything there. We did a physical, um, security clearance if you went, didn't have one. I mean, it was like one-stop shopping. When they come, they bring with them the qualifications that they have, not only what they have obtained, but what they have been recommended for. Their NCOERs, their NCO evaluations is critical in showing that they do demonstrate the leadership that they, they need. The letters of recommendation show that they can obtain the warrant officer branch, that they have that ability and they have those technical traits. To some extent I'll be starting all over again, uh, learning um, not necessarily the technical aspects of my field, but the leadership. Phase two involves distance learning as well as five months of individual duty training. It's designed to uh, present them with as much challenge as we possibly can to see how they react under stress. One, I can't hear you, two, a little louder. We try to encourage time management, prioritization. We'll give them more tasks than they could possibly ever accomplish in a given period of time to see 
where they where they choose uh, their priorities and where they place their priorities and whether they put themselves first or whether they put their other candidates first. And that's something that when the TAC officers come in there and your wall locker is squared away and your um, everything is folded correctly you know, and your bed's right and your shoes are underneath your um, you, you think why why do we have to do that and a lot of it's just because of attention to detail and a good warrant officer is considered a technical expert in their field and through that technical expertise even the most intricate things as dotting your I's and crossing your T's is extremely important. My eyes and ears are ready for the coming of the text. They have trampled through my wall locker where all my stuff is stacked. And By the time they get to the phase three, which is an advanced portion of the WOCS program, they're at ease in making a decision in a stressful situation and the chances are likely that they're going to make the right decision. Marching on! Proud keeps marching on! Hey!